Hey, y'all, appreciate you tuning in today to First Step Ministry. Let's take a look and see what God has to say today. Uh, again, I am Evangelist Darlene Johnson with First Step Ministry, and we appreciate you being here with us today. I have a thought today that I want to share with you. The title of today's message is Don't Waste Your Goods. Don't waste your goods. Amen. This is in Luke chapter 15, and we will start in verse 10. Amen. And this is Jesus talking, and I love it when Jesus speaks. And he says, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divideth unto him his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Amen. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with a husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he had came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against thee, and no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants." And he arose and came to his father. But he, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Amen. And right, we'll stop right there for right now, but... Again, today's message is titled, Don't Waste Your Goods. And see, that's what this son right here, he had done. He had spent everything that he had inherited from his father. Okay, he even got so low that he, he ended up feeding the pigs, you know, and, and he got so far down that he was in the pig pen, I guess you could say. But let's back up right here, and let's go back up to verse 10. God wants to speak something right here. Okay, verse 10, it says, Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Okay? Again, God doesn't want us to waste the goods that he has given us, meaning the relationship that we have with Christ. Amen. And we see here how much love there is in heaven for us. You know, if if a person gets to, to the place in God that they're not moving forward and they go backward and then they realize, like this young man, they, they had to realize they had to go to the pig pen. Amen. And then they had to come back. We have to get to the lowest point in our life sometimes before we can really see who and what God is. Amen? But the angels in heaven rejoice over that one soul that would come back 
or that one soul that gets saved. Maybe you look at a person and think, well, they ain't nothing. They're nothing to get excited about. Amen. But that's not what this right here says. The angels. There's joy in the presence of angels. See, the angels rejoice when a person gets saved. The angels rejoice when that prodigal son or that prodigal daughter comes back. Amen. The angels, they will just get so excited. And there's so much love in heaven. And, and how can we not see just how, just how important it is for us to live a godly life. Amen. But Jesus is saying today, don't waste your goods. Everything that I have given you, that relationship that you and I have together, Jesus is saying, just like this young man here, he realized, hey, I've, I've wasted everything. You know, this young man, he goes to his father and, hey, give me what belongs to me. Okay, so he gathered up all of his goods and he went off over here somewhere and he squandered everything that he had. He squandered everything that he had. Everything that he inherited, he just blew it and he threw it away. He got so low that he had to go. He went off into a country over here, wherever it was. And sometimes we have to go into the wilderness. You know, sometimes we put our own selves there because of the things that we do in life. Amen? Amen. But in verse 16... We see right here that the son was even willing to eat what the pigs ate. Do you know a pig is a dirty animal? It wallers in the mud. It eats slop. It eats something that a lot of other people don't want. Or when you get through eating your plate, you just put it in a big old slop bucket. And at the end of the day or the next morning, you go take that slop and you feed it to the pigs. Amen. This man here, he knew that he had wasted everything that his father, and here in this, in this chapter right here, the father represents Jesus. Amen? The father represents Jesus. Amen? But this son, he was willing to go to the hog pen. He was hungry. He was hungry. He was willing to eat the slop. Amen? But sometimes we have to go to the pig pen to see just how blessed we really are. This man wasn't offered anything to eat. And he's, he could see right here the, the corn husk that these dirty, filthy pigs were fitting, you know, fixing to eat. And he's like, hey, I'll be willing to eat that. Just give me something to eat. Because this man, he didn't have any money. He didn't have nothing or he didn't have nobody. He was way off in another country. And the other country here represents being out of God's will. Amen. This right here is a deep word if we'll just get into it today. Amen. But we see right here the son was willing to eat the slop. The man was willing to eat the slop. Amen. Amen. We don't have to eat the slop, church. Amen. All of a sudden... This young man, he comes to his senses, I guess you could say, and he's like, duh, what was I thinking? I left a place where I had everything. I had food. I had shelter. I had love. I had it all. But I wanted to do it my way. And I said, give me what belongs to me. Give me all my money that I've inherited. Give me everything that belongs to me. I'm leaving. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to do it my own way. How many times do we want to do it our way? Come on, somebody. We want to do it our way, but let me tell you, our way does not work. Amen? We'll end up like this prodigal son here. You know, he'll. sometimes we just get off out there, and we think that we can do certain things, and we think that we don't even need God anymore, but Jesus is saying right here, don't waste your goods. Don't take it for granted. Every day that we serve God is priceless. Everything that we do for God is priceless. There's no gift too big or too small. When God gives it to you, then you love it. It's like a mother when she has that child, you know, the, the mother is going to take that child and love it. The mother is going to take that child and hold on to it. She may have 10 or 15 children, but still, every time she would have a new child, a new baby, 
that mama is so proud of that precious baby boy or so proud of that precious baby girl. That's the way we should feel about Jesus. Amen? And let me tell you, he feels that way about you. But the Father here in this scripture represents Jesus. Amen? Amen. Verse 18. This young man, he could see where he messed up. How many times do you see where you mess up? And you, you begin to think, well, what in the world was I thinking? Why did I go over there? Why did I do this? Or why did I do that? We might even shake ourselves, you know, or... Okay, what was I thinking? That over there, I don't need that. That over there is not good for me. That over there will not satisfy me. Amen? But we're wasting. We're throwing away the relationship that we have with Christ. And see, all this stuff right here can represent the things of the world. This young man, he left home. Home right here in this scripture, to me, it represents Christ. Amen? We want to leave home. We want to do it our way. Our way will not work. We've got to come back home to Jesus. Amen? Amen? And verse 19, And the young man says, And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. Amen? This young man, he began to feel ashamed of himself. How many times do we feel ashamed of ourselves? Amen. We think, well, I've done messed up. I went too far back for God to pull me through this. This young man, he knew that he let his father down. He was even willing to not call himself a son. He was willing to become a servant of his father. He just knew that he had to get back to his father's house. I'll not even say that I'm his son anymore, but I just want to go back to my father's house because he knew that he left the very thing that he needed. Amen. Sometimes in life we leave the very one that we know that we really need. Amen. Verse 20, he went to his father. Now get this, church. This is for somebody. This young man, he rose up. He finally understood, hey, what am I doing? Eating slop from the pig pen. I don't have any money. I don't have anything else. What do I have to lose? So he rose up. And he came to his father. Now get this. When his father could see him coming, from far away. The young man didn't run to his father, but the father ran to the young man. Amen. To me, that is Jesus. Jesus is watching. He's looking for that one, that prodigal son or that prodigal daughter that had wandered away. They had served God for many, many years. And for whatever reason, they have took a wrong turn in life. I know what it's like. I have children of my own. You know, I don't get to see them a lot because sometimes they just really don't come around. But sometimes, you know, I'll pick up my phone. You know, well, did this son or did that daughter, did they call me or did they text me? See, I'm looking, I'm watching, you know, eager for them to call me or say, hey, mama, you know, if you're at home, I want to come and visit this is like Jesus here. This father, he was expecting his son to return, okay? Again, the father in this scripture represents Jesus. Home represents Jesus, amen? So here goes Jesus. He's standing and he's looking for that prodigal son or that prodigal daughter. Oh, wait, I think I see him coming. Jesus gets so excited and he begins to run to that son. He begins to run to that daughter. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Welcome home. That's what Jesus is saying today. Welcome home. Amen. Amen. Whoo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus is watching and waiting for you to come home. Maybe you've never even known Jesus, but he's still watching for you. He is still waiting for you. Amen. He bled and died for you. Your ticket has already been paid. So why not go ahead and go home to Jesus? Amen. Go to your father's house. Amen. Where you can get what you need. Amen. This world has nothing to offer. You turn on the TV and I say it all the time. All we hear is bad news. We need some good news today. Amen. And this right here is good news. News. If this doesn't make you feel good, then I don't think anything can make you feel good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, there's always a celebration. Amen. When you go to church and you preach your heart out, and like Mom Evelyn was saying, she had one to come to the altar. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Amen. Oh, I can just see the angels rejoicing in heaven over one lost soul. Amen. Or maybe that backslider that had been serving the God for years and years, and then they just, okay, it's too hard. I can't do it anymore. But God deals with that heart. Amen. Jesus is out there watching. He's looking. He's waiting. Come, son. Come, daughter. I'm standing here waiting on you. Come back home. Amen. Come back home. There's always a celebration. Amen. Amen. When somebody gets born again, amen, they go to that old-fashioned altar and they begin to cry out to God. They get saved. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. What a celebration that is. Amen. Amen. We could throw a party down here, a birthday party, anniversary party, or whatever it might be. We'll go and we'll get the very best that we can afford to get. But let me tell you something. There's not a celebration that goes on down here like the celebration that they have in heaven when one lost soul will come to know Jesus or when that prodigal son or that prodigal daughter will come back home. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Now, if that's not a celebration, what is? Amen. Oh, and there's always a celebration when a person comes to Jesus and only the best will do. Amen. Only the best for the celebration. Why do I say that? It plainly tells you right here in verse 22. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. He didn't say go get a robe. He said go get the best robe. Amen. Go get the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his finger. Amen. And shoes on his feet. Amen. Let me tell you what God was giving me this morning about this right here. Amen. Y'all pay attention. There's a word right here. Amen. Only the best for the celebration. The fatted calf represents only the best for us. Amen. If you go and, and you get something to eat, you're going to want the very best. Amen. Amen. You're not going to kill a calf before it is time for it to be killed. Amen. It has to have some meat on its bones. Amen. It has to have some fat. Amen. Because that's where the flavor comes from. But Jesus is saying only the best for you. Only the best for you. But see, just like the robe here, the best robe. Now get this, pay attention. The robe could represent a priestly garment. See, we never know what is going on inside of a person's heart. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. The ring could represent the marriage that we have with Christ. Amen. Somebody should say amen on that one. Amen. And the shoes are needed for our daily walk with Christ. Amen. So see, God's done covered it all, somebody. Are you getting this today? The father is glad because his son that was dead, but now is alive. He was lost, but now he is found. Amen. This man didn't know where his son was. And I know I've been there before many years ago as a teenager I had heard rumors that my father had passed away, but he had not passed away. And then a couple of years later, we ended up meeting back up again. And he'd heard the same story about me. I thought that he was dead, and he thought that me and my two brothers were dead. But we reunited. God is wanting to reunite with you today. Amen? The father is glad because his son was dead, but now is alive. Verse 24. He was lost, but now he is found. Amen. If you love something and you lose it, what are you going to do? Are you just going to chug it off like, oh, well, I'll go buy me another one? No. No, we've got to go look for it. Amen. 
We got to be expecting to find it. Amen. Because we, we love it and it was priceless. Jesus loves you and you are priceless. Amen. So if you have strayed away, amen, I can just see Jesus now. It's like he's standing on the back deck looking out, you know, just waiting for you to come home. Amen. It is not too late. Amen. Jesus is saying to somebody today, don't waste your goods, but come back home. Even if you are in that pig pen today, even if you are laying there wallowing in that slop that somebody else has took off of their table that they didn't want, that's what slop is. That's what scraps are. It's something that can't really be used for anything, but just toss out and give it to the animals. Amen. Don't matter how many times you waller in the pig pen. You can come back to God. Amen. Come back to God. But what a message right here. See, Jesus has already preached this message right here. Why? Because it's written in red. Anything that's written in red, oh, hallelujah, red for the blood. Amen. But Jesus spoke this. What a message Jesus himself was trying to preach right here to let people know, hey, come out of that pig pen. Come back. I love you, and I want you to come back. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But what a celebration. Amen. What a celebration. You know, we have Christmas that's coming up pretty soon and, and Thanksgiving. And, and boy, we just go out here and oh, we got to have this and we got to have that. You know, we're having this big celebration. Mama Evelyn is coming. Our kids are coming. Our grandkids are coming. And man, we're just going to deck the house out. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But can you imagine what is going on in heaven? Amen. Hey man, a few weeks ago we were in a service and praise the Lord, we got to see one person come to the altar. They confessed that they wanted Jesus to be their Savior. Oh man, we were just rejoicing and praising the Lord. And as much as we were doing that, the angels in heaven were even rejoicing more than what we could. Amen. Amen. But I want to encourage you today. Shake yourself. Get out of that pig pen. Go back to your father's house. Go back to Jesus, your first love. Amen. I talk about that all the time. Your first love is Jesus. Is Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you, you may think that you want to do it your own way. And God will let you do it your own way. But God still loves you. And I can just see this shepherd's hook right now. That's what a shepherd uses when his sheep begin to get too far away. Amen. That shepherd will take that shepherd's hook. If you know what a candy cane is, it's shaped just like a shepherd's hook. Amen. Well, Jesus, he takes that shepherd's hook. Come on now. And he'll reach out and he'll get that shepherd's hook and he'll get you and, and he'll gently. He's not going to drag you back, but he'll just gently. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. You're going in the wrong direction. I need you to come a little bit closer to me. Why does Jesus do that? Amen. Because he knows the world is full of wolves. Amen. Amen. You can be bitten and devoured and tore all to pieces if you get too far from Jesus. How do I know? Because I've been there. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I just thank the Lord today. But as I was reading this this morning, let me tell you, I began to pray last night. I was like, God, I need a message. I need a message for today. God didn't give me nothing last night. I was sitting and reading my devotion this morning, and you know how you just open the Bible and it kind of bounces off of the page? Oh, boy, what a message. And to beat it all, Jesus has already preached this message. Amen? And I'd never even realized that until this morning when I was reading this. But what a message. Oh, hallelujah, what a message. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Amen. Do you love the Lord? He is so worthy to be praised. But he's just out there. Jesus is saying, come on. Come on. I see this in my spirit. Amen. Y'all might think I'm crazy, but that's okay. I know what I see in my spirit. But Jesus is telling somebody. Somebody's going to watch this video. Amen. And Jesus is telling you, come back. Come back. I'm out here. I'm watching for you. I'm listening for you. I'm out here. Come back. That's what Jesus is saying today. Come back. But don't waste your goods. Don't throw away all of the time that you spent 
reading your Bible, all the time that you've done without you have sacrificed, all the times that you have fasted and you have prayed and you have sought God, don't throw that away. Don't waste your goods. Amen. You fast, you pray, you read for a reason. It helps you, it helps others, amen. Whatever you put into your relationship with Christ is not only for you, but it is for other people as well, amen, because they will see Jesus all over you, hallelujah. But God is saying to you, don't waste your goods, amen. Don't think this world has something better to offer you because the grass is not always greener on the other side, amen. But don't waste your goods, Come back. Come home to Jesus. You might be that prodigal son or you might be that prodigal daughter today. Amen. But Jesus is saying, come home. Come home. Doesn't matter what you've done. It matters where you're going. Amen. Amen. But I hope y'all got something out of this message today. And like I said, Jesus has already preached this message thousands of years ago wow hallelujah ain't that amazing when you can open your precious word of god and you can see something in there and you realize it's already been preached even before you were even born jesus preached this message amen hallelujah but i encourage you today if you don't know jesus as your savior then you need to come home there's always room at the cross it's never too crowded at the cross amen even if there's all kinds of other people there. You know what amazes me about Jesus? He's constantly listening to this voice and that voice, this son and this daughter, all at the same time. But yet he ministers to us one-on-one. -on -one. Amen? He can distinguish between my voice and your voice. But he answers us the way that we need to be answered. But he's telling you again, come home. Amen. Amen. Hope y'all got something out of this message today. I know when I was reading it this morning, boy, God was giving me something fresh and brand new. You might read the same scripture over and over, but every time you read it, God's going to give you something brand new. Amen. He'll give you what you need for that moment. Amen. But I appreciate y'all today. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you know, my prayer for you is this, that you, you would just open your heart to Jesus. He'll, he'll knock one time. He has to. He has to. Please don't keep turning Jesus away. Don't keep turning Jesus away. But I love you, and this is Evangelist Darlene Johnson with First Step Ministry. If you would like to sow into this ministry, you can do so by contacting us uh, at P.O. Box 214, Old Fort, Tennessee, 37362. And we would encourage you to pray about it and ask where God would have you to sow your seed. Amen. God bless y'all.